Oh, hey guys, that was the Mavic Mini, and uh, this is Return to Home. Details that you may not know about, but are super important for the safety of your aircraft. Stick around. Okay guys, so the Return to Home feature, there's a lot of details in here. We're gonna go into them all, but I really want you guys to understand how the Return to Home feature works. It's a little bit more, there's a little bit more to understand than just pressing the button and hoping it comes back home. So let's dive right into those details. So there are two technologies that the Return to Home feature 100% relies upon, and without those two functioning correctly, it's just not going to work appropriately, and you could lose or crash your drone if you don't adhere to those and make sure that those are working correctly. So first First off, we have GPS. GPS, of course, is the global positioning system. Uh, you need to have a good location connection with the GPS satellites for this to work. So first off, you need to have a, a home point, point marked. Updated. Now, Please how does the home point get marked? Well, first off, it has to be connected to a certain number of satellites in the sky. So you need to make sure that where you're taking off from has a good visibility to the sky and you need to make sure that it locks into enough satellites. Now, the minimum that DJI uses to lock into a location for you is eight satellites. That's the minimum, is eight. So there's four actual GPS, US-based GPS, and four GLONASS Russian-based GPS satellites, two different systems. You don't need to know that, but there's eight satellites as the minimum to mark your home point. So don't take off without getting your home point marked and make sure and check that it is accurate. You can click on the map down here in the bottom and make sure that you have an appropriate home point mark that is in your location where you're at, where you want it to return to home. By default, it's going to mark the home point as the location that the drone is currently at when it finds its location at first. So when it gets at least eight satellites and has uh, probably about four bars of signal for the GPS uh, indicator, then it will get the home point at that point. So if your drone is sitting here on the ground ready to take off, that's where the home point will be. If your drone is up in the air 200 feet that way, when it finds that location, that's where it's going to be. Now, I certainly never recommend you taking off without having the home point marked, without it getting a good GPS connection. So watch out for that, okay? Secondly is the compass. The compass is the second piece of technology that is absolutely imperative to be functioning correctly for the drone to return to home appropriately. The compass is super important. That's how it knows where it's facing, what direction to head for home, uh, and without that working correctly, it's not going to work. So make sure that you don't have a compass error before you take off. Make sure that you don't have any metal uh, that it's sitting on. Make sure you're not sitting on, on uh, maybe a concrete slab uh, that has steel rebar in it. Don't take off from the hood of your car. Lots of different things can cause magnetic interference. So be super careful of that. Make sure that if it requires a compass calibration, Try going to different location, make sure that you don't have anything on you that's going to cause uh, compass problems. And then if it's still asking for compass calibration, then do the compass calibration. But don't do it next to a piece of metal or something like that. While you're waiting for the GPS satellites to lock in, because sometimes, especially with Mavic Mini, it can be uh, a little bit frustrating how long it can take for the GPS satellites to lock in. So the first thing that I recommend you do is that you go into your uh, settings. So up here in the t upper right hand corner, go to the safety tab, and then there is this auto RTH altitude. This is the altitude that the Mavic Mini is going to rise up to before it comes back and returns home to you. And the reason for that is that it is trying to get over any objects that are in your area. So the idea is that you want to set that value to the highest value, to the minimum value above the highest object in your area. So make sure that like in this area, I've got some small trees, I've got some, some houses, I don't have anything super tall, so I could probably do like 70 feet and I'd probably be fine. I might set it maybe a little closer to 100 feet, but you want to set that return to home altitude to something that's just a little bit higher than the highest object in your area. Now, you don't want to set that too high. Uh, if you're like in my area here, residential area, that you don't have anything super tall, uh, you don't want to set it at 400 feet because of a couple of reasons. So first off, you don't want to set it too high high because you don't want the it to waste the battery going up higher and then coming back and then going down that's extra battery that you're burning to go up those extra 300 feet that are really unnecessary so that's the first reason the second reason is that the wind is actually blowing 
much higher at 400 feet than it is at ground level. And so the wind might not be blowing very hard here at ground level, but it may be blowing much harder and sometimes two to three times faster when you're at 400 feet compared to down on ground level. Now, the Mavic Mini is a great little drone, but it doesn't handle high wind speeds very fast, very well. So you need to be super careful of that. So uh, watch out for that. Okay, so set the return to home altitude in your software here to the minimum amount. So just give your little bit of wiggle room above the highest item in your the highest object in your area, and you will be good to go. Before I get into that, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video freelancing, and much more. They have a premium membership that gives you unlimited access to all of their classes. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. One of the classes I found useful when I first got started with drones was Drone Photography Shoot Professional Photos with Any Drone. I didn't have a background in photography and with this class I was able to learn about so many different aspects of photography as they relate to drones. And I was able to do it in small bite-sized chunks at my own pace. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, just click the link in the description below and you'll get two free months of premium membership with unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. All right, so now once you've actually set up uh, and you have a good GPS satellite, you have a good uh, compass, uh, and you've taken off, there are four different reasons why a return to home can be invoked. So the first one is uh, you can press the buttons, right? So you can press the button right here on here, but you can't just, just a quick press doesn't actually do anything. You have to actually press and hold it. And you can hear it now beeping. So now it's doing the return to home feature. If I press it again while it's in return to home, that will actually cancel the return to home. Okay, the other way is that here in the software, you can press the button uh, in the software here on the side and it'll pop up another screen asking you to confirm whether you want it to land or return to home. Now, this is, we'll come back to this in just a second, but this can be different. The screen will be different depending upon how far away the drone is from you. We'll talk about that here in a second. So that's the first way is you can press the buttons to invoke a return to home. The second one is you just lose signal, right? The Mavic Mini uses Wi-Fi. If you're in a Wi-Fi dense area, uh, you know, I'm in a subdivision here. So uh, there's, every house has a Wi-Fi. My house has a whole bunch of Wi-Fi in it. Uh, and so you might lose signal, right? Especially if you get out to distance. So uh, if you lose signal, after 11 seconds of the signal being lost, it will automatically do a return to home. Uh, and it will do the process of, it'll raise up to the return to home altitude. It'll come back to you at about 18 miles an hour. We'll talk about that here in a second as well. And then it will come back and land roughly in an area about one to three meters away from where it actually took off. It doesn't have precise landing as of this recording. So uh, it's not going to land exactly where it took off, but it will land probably one to three meters, right? So three to 10 feet away from where you took off, it'll come back and land. So you wanna make sure that the area that you took off in has a wide open area and is able to land. Oh, so there's a low battery. So this is the other one, is the next one after the loss of signal is a low battery return to home. So if I don't do anything, it's just going to automatically return back to me. Uh, so now it's it's giving me a prompt and it gives me a countdown. 10 seconds, low battery, aircraft will return to home after countdown, continue operating remote controller. So it will automatically start the process of returning to home. So that is uh, the uh, other option. So if you press a button, it'll return to home. If you lose signal, it'll return to home. If you lose, uh, the battery gets down to a certain level that it says it can't it doesn't have enough battery to be able to return to do anything else other than to return home it will automatically come back for you so it went up came back and now it's coming down and it's gonna come sort of close so it's gonna be a little off of my deck here so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel this so I'm going to press the button and cancel it, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to land it myself here. Watch out. Watch out, Turbo. <laughs> 
So we'll just land it right here off of screen. And there we go. So now we've landed it. So now it says char uh, charge battery required before it can take off. It'll prompt you for about 10 seconds before it actually initiates the return home procedure. You can go ahead and cancel that, but do so at your uh, at your risk, right? Make sure that you can get it back and make sure that you're keeping track of whether you're going upwind or downwind, right? Remember that when it has to fly back, if it's flying into the wind, it's going to take a lot more battery than it is if you're flying with the wind uh, to be able to get back. And then the fourth one is actually related to the, the uh, signal loss, although it's not 100% signal loss. You can have a, a connection with the remote control, but not have a video connection. And so that's another one where the software will actually prompt you whether you want to return to home. Uh, that one I haven't been able to replicate, but uh, uh, in, the, in the manual it talks about that one. Now, there are two specific features that are huge safety features of the return to home that I really want to talk about. So the first one is that when you're returning to home and it's in that process of coming back, you can actually control a little bit of what it does with the sticks. Now, the most important one, in my opinion, is you can actually push the stick forward and make it go faster. I said earlier that by default it goes 18 miles an hour back. That's the fastest it can go. Well, if the wind is blowing... 20 miles an hour, 22 miles an hour, something like that, then uh, it will actually not be able to get home, right? Because it maxes out at 18 miles an hour. So you wanna make sure that you get at home. So first off, you shouldn't be flying in high wind, but if you do get caught in a situation where it's uh, not able to come back, it's get, being blown backwards, or it's not able to make progress, you can actually use the stick, the right stick in mode two, to press it forward. Whatever the stick is that you have set for it to go forward, uh, for me, mode two is straight forward on the right stick, makes it go faster. And it'll go from 18 miles an hour up to 30 miles an hour. So it will give it a much better chance of being able to beat the wind to get back. So don't just sit there and watch it go, get blown away. You fly it back. Even if it's in return to home, press that stick forward and it'll get back to you faster. Now, of course, you need to be aware of your battery, right? Because making it try and go faster is going to use up more battery. But that's a super important one. Now, the other, other item with that is that if you don't have any other options, objects you're stuck in that wind well we talked about earlier that the wind is blowing much faster at 400 feet than it is at 100 feet right so if you're it's returning to home at 400 feet well push your right stick forward right to go faster and then do your left stick down and that'll lose altitude so when you're coming it'll get down out of that uh wind that's blowing higher at the higher altitude so those are super super important safety features that you need to know about is even when it's in the automated return to home right if you're disoriented you're not sure which way it's pointing that kind of stuff don't worry about it the return to home will will help you but you can press the right stick forward and really get some extra speed out of it use the left stick pull it back to lower your altitude assuming you don't have objects that you're flying over the top of, and it'll help you get it back. Now, the second feature that is really important is you are able to change where the home point is at any time. So if we go into the settings, we go to that safety tab, and then there is an update home point feature in here, okay? So now underneath that, you actually have a map that pops up that will show you where you're at, where the current home point is, and you can drag that map around and tell it where the new home point is, okay? So this is useful in two, two situations. The first one isn't necessarily safety, it's more convenience. Say I'm out for a walk with my family, I wanna uh, uh, take my drone, get some pictures of us, and we're walking this way, right? Well, I'm not gonna be, even though I took off from here, this is not where I wanted to return to home because you know, in 20 minutes when I'm done with my battery, I'm gonna be 20 minutes that way of walking, right? Or if I'm going for a jog or riding a bike or something like that, right? So I'm gonna be 20, 20 minutes that way. Maybe you're on a boat, right? And you <laughs> take off from this area and you want the return to home to be over there. Or uh, another safety feature, right? You're on a boat, okay, and you are in the middle of the lake, you launch it, but you want it, instead of returning to home where you're going to be, because you're on a boat, you're floating around, you don't know where you're going to be, maybe you want it to return back to the parking lot over there if you lose a connection or the battery gets low or something like that. So you can set, you can use the map here, drag it around and set the home point to be a safe area of landing, okay? So that's a, a super important safety feature. The other safety feature is, with the wind, right? Say the wind is blowing away from, or 
yeah, it's blowing away from me, right? And I have my drone out there. Maybe I'm over a lake again, right? Or I'm over a river. Maybe the wind is blowing across the river, right? So maybe what I want to do is maybe set the return to home point to the other side of the river. That way, if the wind is a bit touchy, right? And again, be careful about wind. Don't choose to fly in wind that's too strong for it, just a super, super caution. But you can update the home point to the other side of the river. That way, if it gets caught, the wind is too strong for it. Instead of trying to fight the wind to get back to you and, it's go and it can't get back to you, you can set the home point to the other side of the river, a safe spot over there. Maybe there's a parking lot or a dock or something on the other side. Set the return to home point there. And then you, if something happens, you hit that return to home and it will go there. Or you lose connection or the battery goes low, right? Something like that. So it's a super duper important safety feature that you, you need to be aware of. Uh, maybe, maybe you combine those, right? Maybe you're trying to use the sticks and you're trying to get it back home, but it just isn't getting back home. So maybe in mid-flight you change up and you say, oh, shoot. Uh, I'm having a problem. So you go in and you change that location super duper quick. And that may be the difference in you saving your drone and you losing your drone. So those are two super duper important safety features I really want you guys to know about. The last thing that I want you guys to know about after those super duper important safety features is the return to home functions differently depending upon how far away the drone is from the home point. Now, if the home point is uh, right here and you're less than 20 meters away, so that's a little over 60 feet here in the US, uh, if the drone is within that, then it's actually just going to land where it is. It's not going to rise up and then come back to you and come home. If it's within that 60 feet, less than 20 meters, it's just going to land right where it is, okay? So you meant, I mentioned earlier, when I press the home button, if it's right here close, it's just going to have a land button. If I'm further away than 20 meters, it's going to give me two options on the screen if I press the button to choose whether I want it to land or choose whether I want it to return to home. So be aware of that. 20 meters, six to about, around 60 feet, it's going to have different behavior. Now that might be important, right? If you're standing next to the river, you're out over the river, but you're only about 50 feet out right you're 15 meters away uh, if you if a return to home is invoked it's going to land so you want to be super careful about that it's not going to rise up and come back to you and land okay so further than 20 meters away further than 60 feet it is going to rise up to that return to home altitude and come back so those are the main features of the return to home. I hope that was super useful for you. Uh, if it was, I got a lot more of this kind of stuff coming in the future. I've done a lot of this kind of stuff in the past, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Be doing reviews of other accessories and products as well, so stick around for those on the channel. Hit a like below if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment and let me know if this was useful for you. What other topics would you like me to cover? And I hope you have a great day. Get out and go fly it. We'll see you on another one. Ciao.